that's Mrs. Zoom right there. So I'm gonna go over a lot of content and you guys have my total permission to copy and paste any of the stuff, go for it, it's all yours. A lot of people will actually do screenshots during the presentation. If you don't know how to do a screenshot, if you take your keyboard that looks like so, and you hit command shift and the number four at the same time, it'll turn your mouse into a little pair of scissors and you can screenshot as much as you want. So again, you have my total permission. So um, I wanna go into a lot of uh, questions that get I get all the time when it comes to running a practice without staff because people, um, people are, they just are constantly scratching their heads when they see everything that I'm doing and I run two practices. So, and I'm raising two kids and I have a husband and I have a house and I have a puppy and all of the things. So how do we do it? How do we run a practice without staff? What are the tools? What are the systems? What are the things? Um, here are my main tips. And one is you want to use your voicemail machine, which we call the voicemail message funnel. We're going to go into all of this. You want to make sure that you have a really healthy, active Facebook group and page. You want to get really well acquainted with a good texting program. And you want to bring in a VA when you're ready. And we're going to go over all of those things. The first thing I want to say from my heart to yours, let's just go there for a minute. It goes really fast. So what am I talking about? I feel like it was yesterday that I opened my practice and I could cry thinking about this. It, you blink and you're 20 years in. So I am begging you guys to enjoy the ride. This should not be a stressed out panic mode experience being in practice and serving. It's not why we got into this. And I think that my community, the Southwest Practice community knows that. And that's why you're hungry for solutions. I beg of you to kick your feet up on a regular basis and enjoy your life because I'm telling you, you're going to blink and you're going to be like, where did the time go? It happens all the time. So I am um, just to introduce myself. If you don't know me, um, my name's Dr. Jody Dinnerman. I've been in practice for over 20 years, 21 years, almost in January. And I've made so many mistakes and I've been around the block and back again, and I've fallen down and gotten back up and fallen down and back, gotten back up. And every time I fall down, it's like my skin gets a little bit thicker and I'm a little bit more immune to the hurt and the heartache and all of that stuff when it comes to messing up in practice, because we mess up, we're human, right? So what I want to see for you is I want to, I want to make sure that you know know what your vision is for practice. I have a really clear vision of what I do in chiropractic. And there are PTs on this call, there are OTs, there are, um, that we have therapists in this group, we have dentists, we have some MDs in this group. So whatever it is that you do, make what I'm, when I talk chiropractic and I've got my chiropractic strong shirt on today, just apply it to your craft. I've coached thousands of chiropractors and really lay people too. At one point I was coaching an entire Arbonne team. Um, and I've also been coached by many. I am no longer a coach. I want to make that very clear. I see myself more as a practice strategist and um, I really just couldn't find the way. I kept trying on new systems and new scripts and new procedures and new coaches and new this and new that, new ways of doing it. And no matter what I did, you guys, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get my stats to change. I couldn't figure it out with my staff. And if you push me to the wall, if you push my back up against the wall, I'm going to figure out a solution. And finally, universe pushed me really hard, right? That's my reality. And I figured out a solution to run my practice without staff. And it's been really awesome. So, um, no matter what I did, I was in the same place. And I hear that all the time. The staffless practice solutions focus on joy-filled automation. Why joy-filled? Because if it's not fun, why should we be doing it, right? We should be enjoying our practice experience. So the first thing I want is I want you to be really connected to what your vision is. Why are you in practice? What is it that you wanna accomplish for your community, for your family, for yourself? 
what was the reason that you went to school? Was it because um, you wanted to serve people like your doctor served you when you were a little kid? Was it because you wanted a certain income? Like, and there's no wrong answer there. What is your vision for being in practice? And you know, you could be thinking, what is she talking about this vision stuff for? I'm telling you right now, if you're not clear on what your vision for practice is, you're gonna be lost. You need to get this piece down now. And as far as my vision is concerned, it's crystal clear why I'm a chiropractor. I, I take care of before, during, and after babies. That's my who. My what is authentic, clean chiropractic care. My where is my own space in a space that I'm completely comfortable in, that I feel just as comfortable as I feel when I'm at home. When yesterday, as soon as I learned about chiropractic, I wanted to become a chiropractor yesterday. So I I'm always a chiropractor. I'm always a mom. I'm always an athlete. I'm always a friend. I'm always a sister. I'm always a daughter. All of these things are true. There's never a time that I don't have a chiropractic hat on. And why? Because chiropractic changed my life. And my why is big enough and strong enough that it's driven me for through over 120,000 adjustments and all of the lessons learned and heartaches and all of the things that I've been through. I still move forward because of my why, because of my chiropractic story. So what I beg of you not to be redundant is get really clean on what your vision is. And then as long as you have, I love this diagram, as long as you have your vision, your vision needs to be backed up by goals and then your goals need to be backed up by actions. So this is the map that you use to make it happen. And this is something that we, we take out of the staffless practice curriculum in soup school. Okay, this is what my vision looks like just to share my world with you. Um, it's, you know, I have Sherman here. This is where I went to chiropractic school. I take care of a ton of babies, you guys. There are, I always say if I don't get pooped on or puked on, I did something wrong that day. Uh, my puppy is a huge part of my vision. I love her so much. And my boys, you know, my husband is completely a babe and we've been together forever. We grew up together. We've been together since we were teenagers. Um, so we pretty much raised each other, right? And he truly is my best friend. He still takes my breath away every day. And my son, Kai, and my son, Quinn, they are, they're my everything. They're why I wake up in the morning and do what I do. So I want you to get really clear on what your vision is. And then of course I have my mom with her rabbit ears and you know, all of the things. So you can see here when you look at my vision, how much joy it includes because one of my core values is joy. And I want you to be really clear on what your own core values are. So that's my vision. So how do we do it? How do we take this vision and make it happen? And my intention today is to share my tools with you. And I've done like a marketing um, course for soup school. I've done um, the three mistakes practitioners make when they think about automating their practice. Today, I just wanna have some fun and share the tools that I use, how, the, how I implement them. And, um, and then at the end, if you're not yet a soup student, we're gonna do some question and answer time. So how do I do staff list? The first thing I wanna tell you about is Trello. If you, you know, I really should be a spokesperson for this company because I use them so much. So I'm just gonna kind of bring my Trello board over here. Okay, so Trello is, someone um, called it the other day, like a computerized system of post-it notes. And I loved that analogy because that's exactly what it feels like for in my brain. So what you're looking at right now is the SOP for the automated practice. What's an SOP? A standard operating procedure. So, so, okay, so an SOP is all of the things in one place. A lot of people will have their SOP on a Google Drive. Some people will have an SOP on paper, like they print it all out in a really pretty binder and present it to new team members. I like my SOP on a Trello board 
So my SOP for not only soup school, but also my practice lives on Trello. So what I do for my soup students, you're welcome, you guys, is I created an entire course in copying my SOP and making it your own. And this is the SOP for the automated practice, what you're looking at. So we have client processes, like the new client process, returning client process, all of the systems that you could possibly need to think about when it comes to your clients. We have systems and procedures, um, the different programs that we use, the money systems that we have, a budget spreadsheet, our practice budget, which you should have available for your staff, right? Um, how you use your phone, what you do with your phone, how you answer your phone, what your phone numbers are, um, your hiring plan, your firing plan, your payroll systems, if you have staff, if you have a VA, it should go here. And then we have templates for canned responses. So things like your signature and um, texting templates, email templates, email one for new patient, email two, you name it, you guys is on this board. And then all of the safe keeps that you need all in one happy place, affiliate ideas, time map stuff, um, your daily, weekly, monthly, what we call DWMs around soup school, practice marketing. In soup school, we offer something called the 12 month practice party. It's like every amazing idea for running your practice and building it and keeping it happy. And then we have, of course, annual and quarterly items. So this is one of the boards in Trello that I use. It's also one of the current bonuses. If you join soup school, you get this for free. Um, I also wanted to share with you, this is a template that I did yesterday. So this is called the, and you guys, if you're adding stuff to the chat, please know that I'm not seeing it because I'm kind of in, let me just open up the chat here. Uh, nothing's added to the chat yet. Okay, if you wanna chat me, just send me a message in the Zoom. Um, or if you're on Facebook, uh, I can see your chat here. So this is a board that I actually created for the soup community yesterday. This is actually the club at Staffless Practices, our membership community, and they all got access to this team board template. So what this is, is all of the admin stuff goes here. And you can pretty much just copy and paste this if you're in the club or one of my, my soup students. So admin goes here. So this basic company information, kind of like a mini version of the SOP. And then you've got your weekly to-do list for for each team member. If you don't have a team, that's totally cool. Set this up for yourself. So here's how this looks. I'm going to geek out just a little bit, okay? Let's say every Monday you want to make sure the first thing you do is check your email. What I would do is I would go here. I would change this to check email, okay? And then I would create, um, make this repeat on Mondays and I would change the change it to the Monday list and save. Now what's gonna happen is every Monday, I'm going to have a whole list of things that I need to do on Mondays. This list here is your original list. Imagine if your team members had this. Imagine if your VA had this. We created a course yesterday for club members and soup members for VAs. And this is what your VAs are gonna be using. Every one of my team members has their own board. And all of my team, I have a bunch of virtual assistants for soup school, not for my practice. I truly have a staffless practice. I have one VA to help me with admin stuff for the office. And I have one person come in and wipe down tables and take out the trash and do all of that stuff. So that's my team, you guys. I don't even have a front desk anymore. So this is the board for team, um, team templates. There was one more board that, nope, I think those were all the Trello boards that I wanted to share with you today. So Trello, listen, if you have not gotten on Trello, please just go, go set up an account. I think I even for, um, for soup students and club members, I even have a coupon code for you to get like a big fat discount when you join Trello. I also wanted to just share as far as Trello and automation is concerned, this is what I call my fact sheet. Every superstar, every staffless practitioner should have what's called a fact sheet. Here's what this is for. Yesterday I did a podcast for the, I'm always doing interviews and podcasts and all of these things. Can you imagine how long it would take me to send every person I did these experiences with my photo, my signature, a link to my book, a link to my practice, a link to my onboarding. So how is this relevant to a practice owner? Can you imagine if 
Um, actually, what you're going to do with this is you're going to share this with the people in your community who you want to build a relationship with. You're what we call your referral partners. So let's say there's a doc down the street. You keep hearing their name. You set up a lunch meeting with them. You say, I want to come hear about you. I want to share what I'm doing with you. I want you to share what you're doing with me. Um, by the way, I'll see you on Tuesday at two and I'm attaching my fact sheet. Your fact sheet is going to have all of the details that you want them. It's it's like your report card or your show off sheet, right? So that's a fact sheet saves me a ton of time, you guys. And then I also want to just do a very shameless plug for the book staff list. If you haven't picked it up, please do so. And P.S. If you have a um, a Kindle account, uh, you can get a free copy of it. Okay, so that's that. The second thing I want to go over with you is time. So here's the thing about time. Some people are morning people. Some people are evening people. Some people have no idea, okay? You gotta figure out when you work best. For me, from like 5 a.m. until 8 a.m., my creativity is pouring out of me. That is not the time for me to be seeing patients. That is not the time for me to be running errands. Obviously, I'm not gonna run errands at 5 a.m. That's the time for me to be sitting behind this computer and going all out, right? When I love to be around people, that's my afternoon time. I love, I feel social, I feel light, I feel like I'm done with my creative process. I feel like it's time to play. That's when I'm in my office. I only have one morning each week that I'm available to my practice members. The rest of all of my hours are from like three until 6.30 because that's when I work best. My weekends, we don't touch them, they I'm off. Wednesdays, we don't touch it, I'm off. So what I beg of you is that you figure out what your time structure needs to look like. When do you play best? When do you work best? When do you create best? I just did two hours of meal prepping. I'm going to Colorado tomorrow. Um, my son is a world-class athlete. He's also going through, um, he's doing a cleanse and I had a meal prep for him for four days. You should see my fridge. I do best with meal prepping from like 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. because I'm still in creative flow and meal prepping is absolutely creative for me. So I just spent two hours in my kitchen. My, my house smells so good. So I could never do that this afternoon because I'm gonna be ready to, so I'm gonna feel light. I'm gonna feel like socializing. So when do you work best? When do you think best? When do you move best? When should your workouts be? I used to have a front desk person who would say, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? So so what makes you happy and where does it need to land on this time structure? So that's the second tip for running a practice without staff. Deep breath, ready? The third tip is the automated message funnel system. You guys, if you have not gotten this yet, please use this system. Who was I talking to? Um, oh, I was just doing a consultation with a dentist and they have like 10 people working at their front desk, all really awesome women, but they're doing so many things that doesn't require a person to do. So I met with the dentist because his number one pain point in practice is managing his staff. This person is complaining about this person and talking about this person and he's had it. He just wants to be an awesome dentist. So I told him about the automated message funnel system and how you could easily take 40 hours a week of what your people at the front desk are doing and automate it and imagine what those 40 hours are going to free up. What if you have, what if Deanna is the most amazing web designer and you didn't even know it because you hired her to answer your phones and you took 20 hours a week off of her plate from answering phones to do the web design stuff. Can you imagine what that would do for your practice? If you don't have staff, the automated message funnel system is gonna save you a ton of time. And here's how it works, you ready? So here's the deal. For three days, I want you to take a sheet of paper. I usually have a stack of paper here, um, but we got the house cleaned yesterday, another thing that I delegate out. Let's say you have a piece of paper like this sitting by your phone or by all, if you have landlines still, by all of your landlines. If you don't have a landline, use a note on your phone, okay? 
And for the next three days, all of the calls that come into your office, you're gonna mark down, mark down, I sound like an old lady, you're gonna, you're gonna write out or type out who's calling, give one word why they're calling and what time of day it is. So three things, who's calling, why they're calling one word and what time of day it is. And you're gonna to start to see patterns. You're gonna to start to see that at usually the same kind of time of the day, the same type of call is coming in. And you're gonna be able to categorize your callers usually in three different groups. In my practice, I have three callers. I have the new people calling in to schedule their first appointment because they don't know my systems yet. I have people coming back who haven't been around in a long time. We get a lot of those calls these days because for some reason they feel that this is the safe time to come back, whatever, whatever it is, right? And then we have current practice members who are just checking my hours or whatever I have on the machine, right? I have a landline because I can always find it. I'm constantly asking where my phone is. Usually I'm on it when I'm asking it, but my landline doesn't move you guys. I hope that you get that. My landline is always there. So I've got three callers, people wanting to book an appointment, new person, current practice members looking for something, whether it's an admin need or a scheduling need and um, people coming back. So my voicemail message funnel, if you call my office right now, you're going to hear me address those three people. Let's say that you're um, a dentist. Let's just use the dentist example. And you find that you've got most of your people are calling about a billing question, um, maybe new consultation, like a free consultation, a billing question, and they saw an ad in the newspaper. Those are the three reasons somebody is calling, okay? You're going to address those three people on your voicemail. The voicemail can certainly be on a cell phone. You guys, I have cell phones hanging out around my house. It does not, it may be $10 a month to get an extra cell phone and a number, a hot number, right? And then it's not going to your personal cell. Do not have your practice forward to your personal cell unless there's an emergency. Don't do that to yourself. I'm telling you, remember what I said? I said that it goes fast. You are going to regret it if you are on 24 seven. Do not do that to yourself. Do not do that to your family, okay? Okay, I just shook my, my finger in your face. Let's get back to this. So you're gonna be addressing three types of callers in my office, new callers, um, people wanting to find out an admin need, whether it's what my hours are or whatever, and then people coming back. So if someone calls my office right now, they're going to hear, hey guys, it's Dr. Jody. Um, I'm from Light Source Chiropractic. I'm so glad you called. And when you greet them, your voice should go up and you should be smiling. We're currently doing, we're putting together a partnership program with a company called Smile Dog and they have virtual secretaries. You guys don't call them yet because I'm putting together good stuff for you. Hang tight. And I said, Brendan, why did you call it Smile Dog? And he said, because when people answer the phone, they should be smiling. And I knew that he was somebody that I wanted to move forward with. So when you do this voicemail, make sure you're smiling. I called yesterday the vet because I had a book, um, an appointment for the puppy. And the woman on the end of the phone, I asked her if she was okay because she sounded so depressed. Like, you do not sound like you want to be there right now. So make sure that your people calling are landing in a place where there's happiness and joy because who doesn't need more of that, right? So your message funnel is going to address each type of caller. It's going to tell them how to get the help that they need. They're not looking to have a 10 minute conversation to book an appointment. They're looking for 30 seconds to get the help that they need so they can go on with the rest of the, the checklist for the day. There's nothing worse than calling an office and talking to somebody who's miserable and does not want to be there and having to be put on hold and listening to ACDC at eight o'clock in the morning when all you want to do is book an appointment to get your teeth cleaned. It doesn't work, you guys. How much better would it be to say, um, to just text and say, hey, can I come in at 10 o'clock today? That's all your callers want, I promise you. Okay, so the voicemail message funnel system is going to give you just that. Any questions? I don't see any questions. All right, I'm going to keep going. The next thing I want you to have is something called an action compass. I want you to know 
exactly what you need to do to get your vision accomplished. If you remember, you wanna have a visual on your vision. You wanna make sure, I mean, it's called a vision for a reason, right? You wanna make sure that you're really connected to what it is that you wanna create. This picture, these pictures that you see right now, this is what I want more of. When I go to my office, my office is my happy place. It's not the place where I get stressed out, right? It's where I feel true joy and totally connected. So what is your vision for your practice? That's the question. You're going to create an action compass for yourself. My second book is all, it's a calendar combined with exercises like this. You guys are going to love it. It's so good. So um, you've got your vision here. Just follow my mouse here. You've got your vision. You've got the goals that back up that vision. You've got your actions that back up the goals. And then you've got the outcomes that you're hoping to manifest, right? These arrows here, you see that? These arrows are your core values. Your core values are going to shoot through all of it. They are the pillars of why you do what you do. Um, Vicki, I'm muting you out. Okay, so again, let me go through this. You've got your vision. So let's, I'm gonna give you an example in just a hot minute. It's totally gonna overwhelm you because there's a lot on it. So you've got your vision. You've got your goals that match your vision. Please take a screenshot of this, you guys. You've got your actions that support your goals and you've got your outcomes that support your actions, right? And then you've got your core values pinging through all of this. This is what this looks like complete. You see that? So the vision, let's say that the vision is to pay off your student loans. That's a really common vision, okay? That's your goal. That's what you want to accomplish. So going back here, your goal is here. So going here, the goal is to pay off the student loans. Then what are the actions going to be to get to that goal? You're going to learn money management. You're going to create an optimal fee structure, and you're going to learn money mindset, right? And what is that going to give you? It's going to give you financial freedom. Probably the core values that are pinging through this are abundance and authenticity. That's my guess. Let's say your goal is physical fitness, okay? About um, three years ago, I let go of 30 pounds. And I let go of 30 pounds because I really wanted to feel like I was authentic in my expression in the world. Okay, so what did I do? What were my action steps to let go of the 30 pounds? I needed to find a trainer and a gym. I need to create a plan to lose or let go of those 20, 30 pounds. You don't lose the 30 pounds, you let go of them. And I needed to create a vision board for what physical wellness looked like for me because I'm very, very visual. Hi, Kimmy, it's good to see you. I'm muting you out, sister. So if your goal is physical fitness, your actions are these, and then what happens? What do you get out of that? An authentic expression, freedom of movement, and optimal energy. I'm telling you guys right now, carrying around, have you ever picked up a 30 pound wall ball or a 30 pound kid? That is a lot of weight to carry around. So when you have these people come into your office and they're very heavy, or if you're carrying an extra 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds, letting go of that weight, it's a game changer. You're different in every section of your life. Be compassionate with people who are carrying that weight around because it is not an easy thing to do. I'm speaking from experience. So I think that you get what this is all about. How does this have anything to do with running a practice without staff? You have to see this stuff and you have to have a plan for yourself so that you fill your time structure, going back to this, with things that are going to make this stuff happen. If your goal is to see a hundred people a week best that you know what your action steps are going to be to get there right and also best that you know why that's something that you want to accomplish for yourself so that's the um the complete the action compass really important so how do you do it right you implement the message funnel system that i just shared with you get a new recording on that phone of yours you guys right you use the marketing map. We're going to go into that in a hot minute. I don't even think I added the slides, but I'm going to go over that. You want to do automation from day one, and you want to stay really connected to your core values and your anchors and rituals. So let's just go into the marketing map for a minute.
and then we're going to talk soup school. The marketing map is going to be um, your marketing plan. Like if we go here and let's say that your goal is 100 visits a week. First of all, you need to know why your goal is, why 100, why not 200, why not 50, why not 75? What's your main goal and why is that your goal? Have that written out here, right? You guys take a screenshot of this right now. So if you can, whether if you're on your phone, just screenshot it. If you're on a keyboard, hit command shift four, take a screenshot of this, blow it up in a word document. Okay. You want to write out what your goals are. This is the marketing stuff. So let's say your goal is a hundred people a week. You have to give yourself three action steps to get yourself towards a hundred people a week that you're going to start today. You're not going to start it tomorrow. You're not going to start it in a week because guess what? Maybe never happens, right? That's the name of my LLC. Maybe is not going to happen. It's going to happen today. So what's the goal? What are three things? Three, there's a magical thing about three. Pick three things. What are three things that you can do to move yourself to that goal? What are the outcomes that you're going to accomplish when you have that goal, when you've met that goal? What are the core values that are pinging right through it? Usually if the, if the goal is 100 visits a week or building the practice, you're going to have to do stuff inside the office. You're going to have to do stuff outside the office. And that's where the four-part marketing map comes in. So four things, internal, I'm going to go through this slowly because I don't have a slide for it. Internal procedures, internal procedures, external procedures, internal events, external events. Okay, let's go through them real quick. A couple of examples of each. Internal procedures are like the systems that you do regularly. You clean up the office, you, you might smudge the office, you go through the file cabinet and take old files out. Like all the things that you do regularly in your office, internal procedures, external procedures. You go to the cafe and drop your cards. You walk around town and shake hands and kiss babies. Well, you don't kiss the babies and shake the hands now, but this is what we did like two years ago, right? You go to the BNI meetings, you do all of the external procedures, the things that you do routine, right? Um, internal events are gonna be like referral competitions or uh, review us competitions, any kind of competition or drawing or raffle, just make sure that you're doing things legally. You can only raffle if you have a certain license in many states. You also can't give a certain amount of dollars over that amount of dollars away for free. You gotta check what you're allowed to do in your state. External events are gonna be things like um, chamber of commerce events and spinal screenings and um, I don't know, taking a possible affiliate partner to lunch. These are the things that you wanna think about and it all ties into your action compass. I hope that that makes sense to you guys. If anybody has any questions as Wayne is joining us, um, drop them in the chat box because I'm looking right here. Wayne, I'm gonna mute you, buddy. There we go. All right, does anybody have questions before I get into the next topic? Anybody at all? Nope, okay, good. So um, here's the thing about this. I'm gonna go back to the time structure. You're gonna get really good at this and then you're gonna forget about it and then you're gonna get really good about it and then you're gonna forget about it and then you're gonna get good and then you're gonna forget about it and it becomes a dance. It's a two-step dance, right? Two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward. You're gonna get really excited about these concepts and dive into them and then you're gonna, then life is gonna take over because that's what life does, right? Do not beat yourself up about it. This is where community comes into play. I get really inspired by community when I see other people winning. And I'm like, ooh, I wanna win like that. Ooh, I wanna feel what they're feeling, right? I love, I, I you guys know that I'm a CrossFitter. If, you, if you've talked to me for more than a minute, I've mentioned CrossFit. I love CrossFit because I get to go to the gym and see other people getting stronger. I get to see somebody PR their deadlift. I get to see somebody do a double under for the first time. And I get to see their face light up. And guess what it does to me? It inspires me to be better, right? You have got to be part of a community. I don't care what the community is. I hope it's my community. Reach out to me if you want information. Um, so that's what keeps you connected to this, right? Seeing other people move through it. Having an accountability buddy that you're matched with. These are the things that we do for you when you join our community.